Politics on Jewish Week TV. I'm here with State Senator Eric Schneiderman, the Democratic nominee for Attorney General of the great state of New York. Thanks for being here. We're here in Brooklyn, New York, where you're uh, campaigning and spending the day. How's the campaign going? The campaign is great. It's a, it's a big state. I'm enjoying traveling around, and uh, I'm very excited about the prospects for what, uh, what I can do as Attorney General. Obviously, one of the concerns you must have is the scandals in the Democratic Party of the last uh, four years. Uh, the governor's office, the controller's office, some of the legislators. Uh, people need to, you know, the Democrats in particular, really need to restore faith in government. How do you do that? How do the Democrats do that? I think it's, it's, uh, it's a critical project. Uh, the public has really lost faith in the fundamental institutions of both the public and private sector, in my view. And I think that given the fragile economic recovery, uh, the, the role of the next Attorney General really should be to restore confidence. Now, in the area of the public sector, it really is a bipartisan problem. I mean, Senator Joe Bruno, I mean, it's, it's on both sides of the aisle, Guy Valella. Uh, the, the issue here is it's time for true reform in Albany. Uh, I believe Andrew Cuomo, who I think will be the next governor, uh, is very sincerely committed, more so than I've seen in, you know, in my lifetime, to really making this reform movement a reality, to changing the rules, to having more transparency, more openness, and frankly, the next attorney general is going to have to play a role uh, side by side with the governor of raising the sense of public integrity. I, uh, I have a very strong record on issues related to public integrity and of going after people even in my own party. I was the leader in the formation of and then chaired the committee that investigated and expelled Senator Hiram Montserrat. That was someone in my party. He and I both represent Latino districts, and so we worked together on legislation, but I didn't hesitate to go after him. And that project of that committee and the 55-page report we issued, I think, really raised the bar, raised the standards for people in the legislature, and I'm very proud of that. Now, one of your predecessors, Elliot Spitzer, as Attorney General, uh, compiled a report of ways to um, assist private schools, including yeshivas, Catholic schools, private schools, uh, and how they can maximize uh, their operation, uh, maximize state aid, and maximize the aid that goes to not uh, private schools. Yes. How do you feel about that? Is that something you would pursue? Yes. Well, in fact, what he did was he uh, convened a task force that included a lot of the you know, the top minds, and really very inclusive, included Randy Weingarten from the Teachers Union, Merrill Tisch, and it, uh, they came out with a report that the Attorney General doesn't decide education policy or education funding, but I do think I can play a critical role in defining what are the legal ways money can go to non-public schools. And I think it's it's uh, it's an issue that has to be dealt with. I think the, the non-public schools in New York State educate 15% of the kids and get 1% of the funding. Uh, I've had meetings with people about this. I think it's probably time to update that report because that was 2002. There have been a lot of new court decisions in this area since then, so I probably would look to update the work of the, that task force. But I think that's a good model for how to make public policy. You start off inclusive, you seek the points of view of everyone, and then you write a report that defines what the legal parameters are. you think school vouchers or tax breaks for people who pay private school tuition are legal or fair? I, I don't think it's a politically viable issue, and my counsel to my friends who are involved with non-public schools is, you know, you got to pick your fights. And I just think, I think vouchers is just not strategically uh, anything that we should be wasting time debating. I, I think it was actually detrimental that for years some people were pretend, uh, some folks were saying, you know, you have to fight for vouchers, you have to fight for vouchers, which is really an unrealistic fight, instead of focusing on smaller things that could have been done that actually could have helped. Now, governor Patterson wanted to furlough state employees. Carl Palladino, as candidate for the governor, is talking about laying off employees. This may end up going to the courts. Uh, do you believe that um, there should be, that there's any way for us to trim the state budget without laying off well, if it goes to the courts as Attorney General, I have to defend the state. So uh, I have to defend, I have to defend the law. I think I think that the what the gov well I think what the governor proposed actually was negotiations with the unions uh, and layoffs was really the threat to bring them to the table. I don't think Mr. Palladino's proposals are real. I don't think they're thought through. Uh, his proposal for a twenty percent cut means shutting down hospitals and schools. I think it's a campaign gimmick. But I do think that. Uh, and I've signed on to the, the program that Andrew Cuomo is advancing, which is a very fiscally tough program of freezing salaries and freezing spending, to revisit the issue of how we manage money. Again, coming back to the same theme, we have to sort out the issue of expensive public dollars. People have to have confidence that their tax dollars are being spent wisely. The Attorney General plays a role in this in the area of going after contractors who are ripping off the system and going after uh, anyone who's abusing the system. And my, uh, Fraud Enforcement Act uh, makes it uh, a powerful weapon for the Attorney General because anyone who submits any false document to the government to get money 
uh, triple damages, civil penalties, a very, very powerful tool, uh, more powerful than any of the other states have at this point. So I do think, I do think that restoration of confidence requires the fiscal house being in order, and I do commend to you Andrew Cuomo's set of proposals because they're not high in the sky, they're not unrealistic proposals like Mr. Palladino's, but I think it is time for us to get serious about this. How do you feel about holding? I understand that you proposed to add a religious rights unit into the, into the Office of the Civil, uh, civil Rights uh, Correct. The Attorney General's Civil Rights Bureau uh, handles all issues related to discrimination. What I've proposed is having a religious rights unit in the Bureau, people who have expertise on issues of discrimination uh, based on people's religious observances, religious practices, whether it's a Hasidic Jew or a Sikh. Uh, this is a problem that as we have a more pluralistic and diverse society, becomes more of an issue, and I'm very sensitive to issues of discrimination based on religious practice. And frankly, there's a lot of, I think, confusion among people uh, in around the state of law enforcement about what is a legitimate concern about religious observance and what's not. And that's something that I would look to address. As a state senator, you're obviously very familiar with member items and what they mean to local community-based organizations that, that depend on that funding. This year, the governor vetoed all the member item fundings, and they're under fire in general because some people feel that they are leading to, in some cases, have led to allegations of corruption. What would you do uh, as attorney general? Do you think that they should be should be more monitoring? The, your opponent wants to monitor and restrict the member items. Well, I think. I mean, I think that's coming. I think there have to be some standards. Again, I think there has to be transparency and accountability. Uh, state money, whether it's in the budget generally or whether it comes through specific allocations, uh, everyone has to know what it is. And uh, Attorney General Cuomo started something called Project Sunlight, which lists all of these items in the grants. I'd like to expand, and I have, a, again, a very detailed proposal to expand Project Sunlight to provide the details of the grants, the more information about the organizations and the boards to make sure that to the extent there is any conflict of interest, it's all out in the open. So I look forward to working with the governor to, uh, uh, again, restore public confidence that their money is being spent wisely and that the vital programs that we fund through the government, whether it's care for seniors or after school programs, uh, run well and run effectively and then the not-for-profits that provide these services uh, don't view the government as an impediment. We're supposed to be there to help them do their job but to make sure that uh, uh, all the money is spent wisely and that we avoid any sense of conflicts of interest or corruption, because that, that really is undermining public confidence. One of the things you said earlier in the campaign that drew some attention was regarding the Reverend Al Sharpton and his National Action Network, that they would have, I think in your words, an extension of their office and in your office. Uh, can you explain that? Yeah, this is, no, no one who was there took this at all literally. No one will get special treatment in my office. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I was making a reference to uh, the idea that in my office, all those who feel they are voiceless would have a voice, and that that was the point. And you know, I, I think it, I think uh, enough has been said on it. Last question: uh, You've uh, received a, a incredible amount of support from the Soros family, George Soros and his family, uh, I think about one hundred and ten thousand dollars over the years. How did you become so close with this uh, very prominent family? Uh, look, I've raised millions and millions of dollars. I have thousands of donors, and uh, uh, that that's those are that's just there among them. I don't have uh, take political cues from any one donor and I have donors who agree with me and disagree with me on a variety of issues so it's I'm, I'm here like I'm proud to have the broadest most diverse collection of donors uh, of any I believe of any campaign in the state right now how do you feel about mr. Soros views of, uh, pertaining to Israel I it's I've never never talked about them and uh, I, I you know I think we would probably have to agree to disagree state senator Eric Schneiderman Democratic candidate for Attorney General of the State of New York, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Great to be here.